In September 2022, NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang declared that Moore's Law is dead. He also noted that today's chips are filled with billions of transistors, capable of executing billions of instructions per second. According to Digital Trends, Huang said during a Q&A, a 12-inch wafer is a lot more expensive today. The idea that the chip is going to go down in price is a story of the past. For what feels like forever, Moore's Law has guided the tech industry, driving the development of cool new stuff and promoting growth in the semiconductor sector. The law, named after Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel, states that the number of transistors that can be packed onto a microchip doubles about every two years. This insane growth has made it possible to create super powerful and complex technologies from personal computers to smartphones to artificial intelligence. Back in 1965, Gordon Moore predicted that the growth of transistor density, the number of transistors on integrated circuits, would continue for at least another 10 years. Was he correct? Examining the chart that represents the growth in transistor density from 1970 onwards, it is clear that it closely resembles Moore's simple plot from 1965. This similarity is not a coincidence and highlights the impressive technological advancements that have taken place over the years. So get this, transistor counts have actually doubled like every two years, just as Moore predicted. And this trend has been going strong for over 50 years now. How wild is that? However, it seems like Moore's law is on its way out. What's next for the tech industry? That's what we're all wondering. Okay, so here's the deal with Moore's law. Basically, the laws of physics are the ones that are holding it back. When you cram more and more transistors into a smaller space, the heat and power that they generate become a real problem. This means that the chips can't process data as quickly and efficiently as we'd like, but don't worry. The tech industry has found ways around these limitations. Things like 3D transistors and extreme ultraviolet lithography have been developed to help out. The only thing is, it's getting harder and harder and more expensive to keep making these advances. As the end of Moore's Law approaches, the semiconductor industry is facing several challenges. One of the most significant is the need to find new ways to improve the performance and capabilities of microchips continually. Achieving this may require developing entirely new materials or manufacturing techniques, which could take years or even decades to bring to market. Another challenge facing the technology industry is the potential impact of the end of Moore's Law. For years, the exponential growth in computing power has enabled the development of new applications and use cases for technology, such as self-driving cars, machine learning, and virtual and augmented reality. Without continued progress in microchip technology, these applications could become limited or even stalled. With the end of Moore's Law, there are challenges, but also great opportunities for innovation and growth. The industry has been increasingly focused on exploring new technologies, such as quantum, neuromorphic, and parallel computing, which offer novel ways to process data and tackle complex problems. Although still in the nascent stages, these technologies hold immense promise for the future of the industry. Let's explore each of these alternatives in detail. Quantum computing is a promising technology for the future of the industry. By using the principles of quantum mechanics, quantum computers can perform certain calculations much faster than traditional computers. This could allow us to solve problems that are currently impossible to tackle with classical computing, such as complex chemical simulations and optimization problems. However, quantum computing is still in the early stages of development, and there are many challenges to overcome before it can become a practical technology. On the other hand, Neuromorphic computing is a novel approach to computing that aims to replicate the structure and function of the human brain. This technology has the potential to revolutionize the way we process data by enabling us to tackle more complex problems than ever before. By leveraging the power of neuromorphic computing, we could create machines that are better at recognizing patterns, making decisions, and learning from experience. Finally, parallel computing involves designing and optimizing systems that can efficiently process multiple tasks simultaneously.
improving overall computational performance. Most of these alternatives are still in the early stages of development, even if they will offer exciting potential for the future of the industry. So it looks like the end of Moore's law might force us to focus more on software and algorithm development. That way, we can make the most out of the hardware we already have. And who knows, maybe we'll even make some big strides in fields like machine learning and artificial intelligence, which are super into microchip processing power. When Moore's law comes to an end, it's like a wake-up call that the tech industry is always evolving. What used to be a big deal might not be anymore, but that just means there are new things to tackle and chances to seize. That was another episode of 5 Minutes Programming. Don't forget to subscribe and join our community using the links in the description. See you tomorrow.